Hi guys, welcome to this session in Microsoft Access. In this module, I want to show you how you can create a project management database. So first of all, I'm going to create a blank database and just call it projects and then create. And when you create a database, uh, the default is this view. Uh, I don't want to start doing this. I'm going to go straight into design. So you've got the options of clicking this symbol, which takes you to design, or you can right click and go in there, design view. Asks me to save the table. So the first table I'm going to create is TBL resources, just a simple resources table. And then it should take me into design on that. So resource ID is what I want the primary key to be, resource ID. And it's on auto number, which is what I want it to be on. And then I'm just going to put the name in there. So I'll just put surname. Oh, no, in fact, I'll put full name. Full name. So I can do Steve Saxton in there. Make it easier. That can be short text. And then I want work availability. So how many hours are they available for? And that can be a number field so that can do for that and I can come back to this later on if I need to but I'm just going to save that now and then add a few records so full name so Steve Saxton and let's say I'm available eight hours every day and then you've got a new person and and Jones and let's say let's say She's available four hours every day. Mark Green, two hours every day. And then Carol White, eight hours every day. So that's my resources. Now I want a table of tasks. So create table design again. So this time task ID will be the auto number field and it will also be the primary key so I'll just click on that and then do a primary key you get that little symbol there so then I need task name task name that's going to be text and then I want a start date tab and that's going to be a date and time type the letter D followed by an end date tab type D and then I'm going to do a calculation field in a second, but I'll need to save this table first. And then the last thing I want is a resource ID. I'll move them around in a minute. Resource ID. So this needs to be a lookup at the resources table. So if I go in there and drop this list down, you've got a lookup wizard. And it'll set the wizard up. I want to look up a field, get values from the table or query. Yes, I do. And that's the only one I've got so far. So I'll go like that. Um, what I'm looking for is just the basic, the first name, full name. So I'll just tap that across. It'll do that one anyhow. So I'll go next. I'm not bothered about sorting it. And then that gives you a preview and it's hidden the primary key column. So that's what I want. Next. And resource. I'll change that to resource name. And this is key. I'm going to tick this which will stop me creating a resource that doesn't exist. So I won't be able to select a resource in this table that doesn't exist in that table. So that's quite key. And then finish that one. Save it. So this is going to be TBL tasks. TBL tasks. OK. And then have a look at that. So now we've got some information there. And we can add some tasks and allocate some resources. So let's just do that. So first one, let's go for task A, keep it fairly simple, start date, it'll be today, end date, will be that, and then resource will be myself. Now what I want here is, what is that duration? I want a calculation field to work out what that duration is in days. So if I go back into design, and then duration, 
in days press tab press C A for calculated and then press enter it'll come up with the wizard for you so now what you need is the end date so I need to end date minus start date so I just need you to double click on those click OK puts it down the bottom here let's have a look see if that's worked save the table yes it has seven duration in days so that's at seven so I've got the tasks and let's do a few more tasks so task B let's say that starts on the 24th and ends on the 25th allocate a person and Jones and so on and so on so if I do task B again same dates 24th 25th a uh, different person mark green so there's just one day there and then I'll do a task C and that can be a longer task let's go 30th to 7th and that can be the other person in there Carol White and that's how that's picking that up so that's okay I'm happy with that so now I'll just close this table and I want to do a query to join these two tables together close that off yes I do want to save it before I do the query I just want to have a quick look at database tools just to show you the relationships now this was created when I went through the wizard the look at wizard and I ticked that enforced reference from integrity option that's what that did one to many so one resource can be on many tasks close that off now if I do a query, query design and just drag these two tables on you'll see that relationship being shown there it is so what I'm going to do is, is create a query and do some calculated fields just bring this up a little bit so task ID I need task name just double click start and end date like so and then I want a calculation field that's now going to tell me what work I need basically or based on that really it's going to be duration in days times by eight assuming we're doing eight hours a day so I just call that work required work being the hours so work required colon and then if I go into the builder again I can go and get the information I need so it's going to be tables duration Duration in days, that's all I want, times by eight hours. Get rid of this little expression symbol. Let's see if that works. Click OK. Let's have a quick run on that. Yeah. So eight hours, that was just one day, and that's there's more than one day. So that's working OK. Go back into design. Now what I need is to bring the resources in. The resource... Um, ID so if I just double click on resource ID bring that in have a look resource ID and in fact let's bring full name in I don't need resource ID as well so let's get rid of resource ID so we've got the full name and I want to know what work availability he's got so if I just bring that in work availability so it tells me he's got eight hours per day but I then need to work that out in terms of the duration of this so there's 56 hours there uh, am I going to be able to do that through those 56 hours over those days that there were so I'll go back into that so now this one needs to be resource availability so I'll go into the builder I'll type resource avail ability colon so I need to do the little sum again so it's going to be end date square bracket minus square bracket start date and then close that times by work availability so 
do a little times and now I can grab work availability from this list let's have a look at that see if I've got that right run that okay got a bit of an issue here I've got not enough work up available so I need to do another calculated field here to tell me what the difference is so if I go back into there back into design so this one if we get into that one go back into the builder this is call this allocation status colon so the calculation I now need to do is resource availability minus work required so I'll go into here now because this query is still getting done it hasn't given me the option so what I'll do is I'll just cancel this off save what we've done so far I'll just leave it as query one and then I'll just close it for a minute and go back into it into design and then th those fields should become available for me so if I go into the builder so this is going to be allocation status hold on so it's going to be into here now queries query one gives you the fields so now I can do double click on this so resource resource availability minus work required okay so I quick in fact let's go back into that I forgot to get rid of the expression thing the colon though click OK to that let's have a run yeah so it's doing it now so they're okay they've got the right number of hours they're four minus four hours because that's an eight hour task minus six hours because it's only available for two so now I can um, rename this task I'll just close it so I'm going to call this query yes I do query so I'll just right click and rename this it must be QRY task allocation task allocation so I've renamed that now what I want to do is create a couple of forms to see how this all sits now if I create a reform on a form on tasks let's go for that one first create um, go for form straight off see what it does so that's just give me a straightforward form if I go into resources create form that gives me a, a form and tells me what tasks I'm on it's just going through each of those so that's okay I can just I can live with this one so let's save this one if I close that yes and I just put FRM in front of that FRM in front of that one FRM okay now this task one I've got a list of tasks there but I, I want a sub form for resources underneath so I know who's on each one so if I go back into design what I want to do on this one is put this query as the sub form so on the form design bit go over there and get a sub form just draw that across and it's coming up with that bring all the fields across you can get rid of some of these if you don't want them on now I want this to be not on the task ID but on the task name next and I'll leave it as that finish and then you usually have to make this a lot bigger than it is just make it a lot longer and then you can just move the thing if you want now let's have a look so we've got task A start work required full name work allocation okay so let's have a look at this if I go forward so these two are on task B and you can see that there's some negatives going here so what I'm going to do is on this column I'm going to put some conditional formatting on it click into this cell it'll affect all of them and then if you go to up the top here to where it says form data sheet you've got conditional formatting as an option so basically if it's if it's um, the cell value is 
less than zero, which means it's a negative. I want that to flag red. Okay, add new rule. If it's greater than or equals to zero, that can be green. Green. Okay. Okay. So green, go forward, red, like so, and then green. So if I go, let's save this one. So I'll call this FRM. Yes, I'll call it FRM task allocation. And then that sits in there. You can open that up and you get the information there. Now, when you go into tasks, you obviously have only got four tasks and it's on an auto number. If you want to allocate somebody else to the same task, you can do, or you could just leave it as a simple person where there's just one person on each task. It's just a one person task. It's totally up to you how your project develops. But that's all I want to cover on this little session. How to create your tables, a little query, and a couple of forms with some calculations um, in the queries to give you some information. In the next session, we'll look at looking at reports and things like that and see how it goes. But hopefully this has been of use to get you started in creating a project management database using Microsoft Access. So thank you for your time. I'll catch you later.